After eliminating Stephen Curry and the reigning champion Golden State Warriors, the Rob Palinka trade deadline molded Los Angeles Lakers are evidently desperate for more. Potentially ending the Dubs dynasty was obviously far from a walk in the park, but now the Lakers move on to a completely different caliber of opponent, the powerhouse number one seeded Denver Nuggets. While last series was accurately branded as a battle between the King and the Chef, the 2023 West Finals will be headlined by a clash between the Brow and the Joker. It'll be a dogfight between the NBA's best offensive player in Nicola and the best defensive player in Anthony. Stay tuned to see why after advancing past the big three of Steph, Dre, and Clay, the purple and gold are more than equipped both mentally and physically to deal with now a Mile High City Big Four in Murray, Joker, Porter, and Gordon. Regardless, the final four cliffhanger is bound to make waves across planet Earth. Just 12.9% of this channel's audience on YouTube is subscribed, so please help your boy out by subscribing. So many casuals were quick to label the Lakers' 2020 bubble championship as fraudulent, and while I always tried to dispute that narrative from day one, nothing counters the false storyline that LA took advantage of injuries to win the franchise's 17th championship three years ago, more than the fact that three of the final four NBA teams remaining in 2023 in the Heat, the Nuggets, and these Lakers also qualified for the Final Four back at Disneyland in the bubble. Damn, y'all. After all the hating trolls you've had to come across on your timeline over the last near half decade, the Lakers weren't bubble guppies after all. Newsflash, LA's bubble championship was anything but a fluke. For the millions across the globe who still believe in their right minds that it was, though, that's what the all-time duo of LeBron and Davis are using as extra motivation. LeBron, AD, and Coach Darvin Ham all said it themselves after finishing off the dubs in six. Their revamped cast of talent is far from satisfied. So they're hungry, they want it, just like me and Brian want another one. Now it's time to go get it. Unfinished business. Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. I, I, I thank God every day, you know. Um, it, it's been a, a hell of a ride, the one I, I, I hope never ends it's it's uh we just have to take it day by day and be in the moment you know we we've gotten past a, a, a two really phenomenal teams this recent one being world champions four times over um and now we're stepping into another realm like Bron say everybody says in the locker room level three you know so now we got to take our our focus our awareness up a level and um, there's only four teams, well, it'll only be four teams left. But uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I don't let anything stress me out. It's just, it's, it's fun. It's basketball. And, and, and I'm really, really having a ball uh, coaching this team and, and representing this organization. We come in with that series with a lot of respect for Denver and what they can accomplish and what they can do against us. And if we're not locked in, they, they'll put it to us. So. We looked at Jermichael Green calling cap against LeBron on his Instagram story in my last video. LeBron would respond to Jermichael by posting a video with Drake's Tuscan leather in the background with the classic bench players talking like they starters, I hate it lyrics, capping off the vid. That nothing was the same album I grew up on, so much love to Braun for referencing the Toronto GOAT with that post. Right quick, much respect to Wardell Stephen Curry II, who was extremely classy in defeat in opposition to Dylan Brooks. Steph would remind us why he's the humble champion by saying on the matchup with he and LeBron, quote, there's so much respect and appreciation for the battles, the experiences, and the back and forths. It's basketball at the highest level. That's all you can ask for, end quote. One thing I love about Steph is that he's a combination of that humble champion mixed with the petty king. He sees everything, about not just his Warriors put out there, but about every NBA team, and translates that energy into a scavenged focus. However, on a team with Draymond Green, backing up the volumes podcasters' bulletin board material provided to opponents has become increasingly difficult for Curry. The dubs would benefit off Steph's voice, or at least his leadership, being a louder presence than Dre's if the dubs organization can somehow find a way to make that happen. That said, I don't think there's any stopping LePodmon. 
pretty insane how Dre would hypocritically touch on Anthony Davis getting hit by Looney by saying that one small hit to the head can change everything, like we forgot about him KOing Jordan Poole back in the preseason. The chemistry was evidently shattered for Golden State by the end of their season. Back to the topic at hand though, as the Lakers have stolen the Warriors' entire flow after eliminating them in six, as word for word, bar for bar, what the dubs had going has now been copy and pasted into the holy spirit of the lake show. One thing that won't be copy and pasted though is the lack of an ability to draw contact the Warriors had, unlike Golden State. LA doesn't need to use narrative or referee manipulation in order to get calls. When you're as bulky, quick twitched, and unafraid of physicality as LeBron James and Anthony Davis are, and when you're as crafty as the best foul drawer in the league that Austin Reeves is, you don't need to argue too much, because these Lakers specialize in attacking the lane downhill and getting to the foul line. How well the Lakers realize what they've achieved here, meaning how much they take into account that defeating the four-time champions was historically difficult as hell, will determine their success in the upcoming rounds. While Steph respected the King and the Lakers, he would also join Steve Kerr and Draymond Green as members of Golden State who refused to fully let the Lakers acknowledge how special of a feat they accomplished truly was. All of Kerr, Curry, and Green have stated on the record after losing to LA that this year they just weren't a championship team, an interesting narrative to spew directly after taking the L. Stories like that, which act to try and dismiss the Lakers' greatness, will act as mere sticks to the Lake Show's fire, in other words, motivate the living hell out of them even more than they already are. Speaking of extra fuel, the Lakers' upcoming opponent has already provided some of that in the past for LeBron, and it's even a former teammate who James won a championship for that was trash-talking back in November, three-point specialist for the Denver Nuggets and formerly of the Lakers in KCP, gave some oddly placed fatherly type advice to LeBron and his team, saying on the King, quote, it's hard to watch sometimes, so from me to him, just get the team together and I just want to see that spark in him again. I don't think I see that spark in Braun, so hopefully he can get it back, end quote. That take from KCP was accurate about the Lakers at the time, and to be fair, how could he have known about the magic that Rob Palenka would pull off at the deadline? But damn y'all, has that take from the Nuggets three-point sniper came back to haunt him. Most insane part about the King is how he relentlessly adapts to the culture so he can continue inspiring the youth. Just take what AR-15 said about James not too long ago, saying he acts like he's 18. He's very childish in a great way. The 24-year-old in Austin has bought into the near 40-year-old's leadership method because of how youthfully vibrant LeBron is, as Reeves would say most recently about LeBron following this series dub against Golden State, I'm happy for him, I know he wanted this series badly. Between the lines, it's LeBron's motor on both ends that's most shocking for his age. The most physically dominant player of all time next to Shaq just moved into fourth place all time in playoff history in total rebounds. The X factor in the Lakers next series against Denver though will be Japanese phenom Rui Hachimura. Rui had a great series against Memphis, not so much against Golden State, but with the Lakers now tasked with shutting down athletic, mobile, and interchangeable forwards like Michael Porter Jr. and Aaron Gordon, Hachimura's 7'2 wingspan and foot speed should match up perfectly with those guys. Just one of many incredible deadline cops for Rob Lo I mean Rob Palenka. But how LeBron's playing on a partially torn foot, yet is the elite defensive talent that he is right now, is beyond me, guys. From the very start of these playoffs, this man LBJ has been a man possessed in terms of shutting down his matchup or generally hustling for seemingly impossible rotations on the backside. I quite literally can't tell you how this man does it, I just know we're all blessed to be witnessing it. 
as the saying goes, we are all witnesses. And the key for the Lakers surrounding James, ranging from his 1A weapon in AD, all the way down to Lonnie and Malik Beasley, the key peace of mind is respecting the greatest all-time legacy James has carved out for himself, in addition to trusting how good their alpha still is. With that peace of mind, the rest of the Lakers can embrace the pressure and step up to the moment as need be.